Hi, everybody. This is Katie. Welcome to episode 10 of Ancient Japanese Gardens. Today, I'm going to be working on Pinky's house and the area around it. We are going to create a little mini strawberry garden. I think we'll put a couple little strawberry gardens throughout the area. We also need to finish the path and really spruce the area up so that it looks really great as we come straight off of the kind of entrance to the island and it leads up to the rest of the areas with all the other villagers. I've been going in a clockwise fashion around the island, but the next person up is Walt and Walt is going to have a rock garden. I definitely want to do the rock garden last, so instead I'm going to start going counterclockwise from the entrance to the island and we're going to go to Pinky's house and work our way back up to Walt, his area will be really easy to put together when all the other gardens are finished. I thought a lot about how to do a strawberry garden for Pinky's area and I finally decided just to do some really straightforward custom patterns instead of trying to manipulate the items in the game. For that, I'm putting two custom patterns into my inventory. Both of them will be on the screen now. The first is a little strawberry hat that can be placed on the ground and I'm hoping we can turn it about and put some things around it so that it'll really look like big, beautiful, juicy strawberries in the garden area. The second pattern that I'm using is going to be a sign. I feel like doing a couple little wooden garden signs for the strawberry garden will both help to kind of clarify the fact that they are strawberry gardens and also bring a lot of really adorable cottage core style into the area. All that's left now is for me to put a few extra supplies in my pocket and we'll get right on to the decorating through a speed build. The path for this area kind of loops all the way down through the bridge and up around the other area. I've shown you guys how I do the path on this island already several times, so I think I'll skip through most of this here pretty quick. I do come up really close to the edge with the path on this particular part of the area. I promise I'll be addressing that in a future episode when we really work on decorating the beach. Once the path is done, I really need to figure out where the strawberry patches are going to go. So I start putting some dark dirt path down into the three places where I want the strawberries to be. I'm not quite sure how big these strawberry patches are gonna be at the moment, but I went ahead and put some of the country fencing around. I don't have a lot of space to tuck some of these pumpkin gardens, and so I, I really felt like getting some of the fencing down so I knew there was at least room for some fencing was gonna be an important part of this process. I'm using the country fencing here and it's gonna go around all three of the little strawberry gardens, but I definitely wanted to leave room. I felt like it made sense that there'd be a gap, so of course Pinky could come in and tend garden. Here I started putting down just a really basic moss custom pattern on the ground so that there was something on top of the dirt. And then I start layering in that little pumpkin hat spun around so it faces forward. And then I have the little green, I think this grass standy is kind of interesting, tucked up behind strawberries. I wasn't positive how it was gonna look, but I actually feel like it does a good job of making the strawberries definitively look like a plant. I actually felt like the little grass standy reminded me most of the stem of a pineapple plant. So if you were ever trying to make a little hat look like the shape of a pineapple, you could probably use this trick and they would go well together. I do wonder what other types of fruits or vegetables the standees could be useful for. Of course, there's the bush as well as the grass, so there are different shapes as well as different colors. They can be a little tricky to spin down in and get in the right direction. I really had to remove a fair amount of the fencing to get it twisted around into the right way that I wanted it to. But for the most part, it was a very inexpensive and easy way to put some green into the garden area, which was particularly important since I was making up a fruit that was going into the garden. With the pumpkin gardens all put together and ready, I decided it was time to get some of the big, beautiful, tall trees in place. And just like all the previous episodes, it was important to do this when I felt like I had the most opportunity for space to put these down. 
I also had a lot of different flowers, mostly green mums and white cosmos, but I do mix in a few of the pink and purple flowers later. I wanted the area to be kind of a transition from the town square. I use a ton of red and pink in the town square, and so I particularly put Pinky's house here so that it was kind of a gradation from those really vibrant colors to still a lot of color, but not as much color. And as we move around, of course, then we get less and less color and more of just the natural brown and green tones on the island. With that in mind, I definitely wanted to put some color in the area. So I was determined to get this imperial fence to fit somewhere. And I finally decided to go back and forth with it and the bush so that it wouldn't be quite as red. I didn't want a full complete line of red up here because it just felt like it was too much. It was too vibrant to have a full line of the fence. So breaking it up with the bush in the middle was both pretty and also a good way to sort of lighten up how much red was being used. After putting the fencing down, the rest of this area was really just about decorations. A few little flowers, lots of really cute little patterns, the same custom patterns I've been using, and then of course filling in the gaps with some of just the cute little details that we have from Animal Crossing items. I'm going to finish up some of the last few details in the area and then I'm just going to time travel a few days forward so that those bushes grow up into place and then we'll jump back in and I'll show you guys a final tour. Pinky's area came out way better than I expected it to. Really soft and beautiful and kind of a cozy charming place to come and spend the day. It definitely has a lot of those cottage core vibes that I was hoping for and I love the way that the strawberry patches came together. I wasn't sure if they were going to look like strawberries but I think they do and the pattern really went a long way to help with that as well as the signs. It was a beautiful pattern to put together with these little patches. I really think that the water in this area does a lot to make it look really peaceful and I can't wait to continue forward with some of the next area gardens. I hope you found something useful here and that you continue creating in this game. Until next time, have the best Animal Crossing Day.